Hello friends, welcome to bispsolutions.com. My name is Sumit and here I'm with my new video in Salesforce Einstein Analytics. And in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate you how can we integrate Einstein Analytics with Snowflake or data extraction from Snowflake into Einstein Analytics and then we can perform data visualization on top of that. So the few things you would be required for performing integration. Number one, you must have a Salesforce Einstein Analytic Cloud subscription. I've already got. The second thing you would be needed is the Snowflake registration. And I've already done that also. And that's my Salesforce subscription I'm using. So I'm using a trial account here. I'm using a trial version for testing it out. And once all goes well i will go for a registered version or a, subs a proper subscribe version so as you can see here uh, once i logged in into snowflake i got some couple of few sample data sets so there's a snowflake sample data set and we used to have got couple of schemas like public and tpcds underscore sf underscore tcl so basically I would be using this schema 100 TCL and within this schema there's a table call item which I'm going to use and this item it holds around 5 lakh records as you can see and the size is 40.6 MB. So I'm going to use this data set or, and I'm going to pull these records into Einstein Analytics and we will perform analysis on this data set. So when I raise a query, when I write a query for and execute this, I got these, uh, I got the sample, the record in the uh, bottom part. That's a data preview section where we can see the total time executed, total execution time for extract of for fetching data and the total number of records. And if you want to download or view results, we can do that and so on. So now let's have a look that how are we going to connect or how are we going to integrate our Einstein analytics with Snowflake. Uh, there's an inbuilt connector available within Einstein analytics, by, but by default, when you registered very first time on Einstein analytics and you look for that data, you look for that data connector, you won't be able to find that. So there are, there are few changes which you need, few settings or changes which you have to make. So the very first setting which you have to do is, uh, you need to go to setup and in setup just go for analytics and within analytics click on settings and when you click on settings you will see one option called enable data sync and connectors and connection so basically this is used for syncing the local and external data with analytics for use in data flows and recipe so the data sets which we are going to add from external data sources, uh, we can add them into data flows or we can create recipes out of it. We cannot get a reference. We cannot, uh, we, will, we are not going to get the data directly into database like we used to get in Einstein Analytics Cloud. So let me switch to Analytics Studio once back. And uh, how are we going to do that? So how are we going to connect? Click on create data set and here data set you will find out external data set so that's the one way through which you can connect to the external data source click on external data and in external data you will get by default as a salesforce locale um, you can see here two more data sets two more external data connections because i have already done some connections for this snowflake so i would be using this bisp custom snowflake or BISP custom connection, anyone can be used. But for that, uh, how are we going to get this? So click on add remote connection. And here, when you scroll down, you will get the Snowflake computing connectors. Click on Snowflake computing connectors and we need to give the connection name. And let's suppose I give name as my custom, uh, let me give a space, my custom connection and uh, i'll copy the same but without space also in description it's uh, i'll just give us description small description 
so custom connection with snowflake now the uh, this connector will require couple of couple of information now first of all is needed schema so the schema is uh, when we switch back to our snowflake the schema is as you can see my schema is i'm using this schema when i move my pointer on the so my schema is tpcbsf underscore sf 100 tcl so i just copy this from here uh, i just copy this from here and uh, i'm going to paste it within that schema so so i'll just switch back to my data schema and paste the schema name here that's the schema it is asking for password so let me enter password of my snowflake make sure the password which you use to register or which you use to log in into your snowflake that's the same password you have to enter database the database name we are going to use the database i'm going to use here is the database is snowflake sample data as you can see the data is, database is coming so i just copy this database name from here and paste it uh, role so my role is sys admin role you can see my role from here so i just write sys admin these are required fields actually additional jdbc url parameter so that's an optional field we can skip this we would be needing a warehouse so my warehouse is compute underscore wh so i just write compute underscore wh and the next information we would be needing is username so i just write my username and account so which account we are using so account is the snowflake account name so my account name is this is my account name so you can get the account name from your browser so for your ease what you can do is you can just extract all the information and store within a notepad or somewhere else now we can click on save and test and as you can see uh, once the connection is successful it will throw a message that the connection test was successful it means we have successfully established a connectivity with our snowflake data i click on continue and the snowflake data that's the connection we use just now my custom connection and any connection which we don't need it we can edit connection or we can delete connection as per on demand so i click on my custom connection and in my custom connection that's the connection we need we use just now and i click on my custom connection and which table we are going to use so i'm going to use the item click on continue the fields you needed you can check the fields which are needed or which you want to add in your uh, which you would like to add in your uh, database so i just add couple of fields brand id or i'll say brand actually class category manufacturer size formulation color units container product name and click on continue click on continue and once we are done with this we can click on save so we are good to start now and once you click on save once you click on save you can preview your data and finally you can click on save as per on as per required if you want to make some changes you will be you are getting an option here for making changes for edit the connection or to edit the data set So this may take some time and uh, if I scroll down, you can see the, that's the SFDC local, that's a custom connection which I have already configured earlier and that's the recent one I have configured. So the fields, so it, as you can see, it has never run. What I can do is I can click on run data sync and it will queue my item and the process will get start and this will run the process this may take some time it depends on the connection speed and depends on the database number of records so as you can see uh, when i'm extracting it out when i expand it it will show the steps which are involved within this connection and let me refresh it it will take some time we need to wait till this process this status becomes completed if you 
click on this it will stop your job explicitly which i don't want and uh, the data sync will take some time it may also throw an error message as you can see when i've tested it with other data set it was throwing an error message because the number of records were exceeding the 100 million so make sure that it won't exceeded your uh, rows the the records the data set which you are loading it won't exceed the number of rows which are uh, limited in wave analytics and as you can see we are about this process is about to complete it and we can see remote sync item is, is going to successful and it is going to register so that's the last stage and it has been it has been registered successfully and the data has been synced but this data we are not going we won't be able to get this data directly into our database so what we have to do is i'll click on data set recipes and we can create a new recipe using that data set so uh, if you are not getting this you can we can go to connected data and in connected data we can see my custom which we had just now that's a my custom connection item i click on item I give a recipe name, so I'll give name as B I S P, or let's say item. Snow flag item recipe, and click on next. If you want to add, we can apply some filters. So what I'm going to do here, as you can see, there's an item size which contains some null value. So I'm going to add a filter and uh, i just add a filter here where item size mm. yeah let me try again where item size does not equals to an a and we get all records and finally i click on save and create data set with all fields and you can select the values that I would like in my BISP custom app or let's go with this time my private app Snowflake item recipe that's the data set name you want if you want you can change or you can rename the data set name right now and finally click on continue if you want to schedule this recipe periodically you can select yes or else I'll go with no I want to run this only once only once click on run recipe uh, this process will take some time if we was saved successfully we can go to data manager and monitor and you can see the recipe is running on right now and once recipe is completed it will create a data set for us within the desired location so it is running right now three operations with zero errors and zero warnings there are no errors and no warnings it will apply a filter uh, I, either you can wait or you can refresh job manually just to check it out whether the process is completed or not so it's still running uh, and this would be fetching the data actually and creating a recipe out of it applying some filters or any uh, data transformations have been applied on the recipe that would be it will make the changes required changes and then finally it will complete it out. so it's slowing up and it's about to finish Yeah, it's not yet finished. So uh, it got failed actually due to some error. And what's the error? The data actually to be read zero. So as you can see, the maximum data it can this recipe can hold is this much, and the current we have this much. So there is some issue with the uh, some number of records and all. But what I can do is I can show you the data set which I have already sync. And for that, let me take you to my analytic studio for 
demonstrate you and as you can see uh, I have already created a data set so uh, if I'll switch to my BSP custom app and I go to data set in data set there is a data set there is a data set added here item snow flag and this data set is coming from snow flag it's an integrated data set which I have fetched from uh, snow flag and pull uh, and stored into Einstein analytic cloud version so here I have got some issue as I mentioned so that's why I've already I'm showing the existing data set and that data set also contains a similar records and all so I click on this data set now and we are good to go and we are good with the visualization now we can do quick visualization out of it so it contains around 195382 records and I can show I can say some of the current price and I can group by units and instead of units if you don't want units we can go with the sizes and further we can drill, drill down with units so it depends on your requirement it depends on the requirement how you are going to do that uh, so as you know that there are a lot of other videos I have prepared to explain more about the Einstein analytics and how can we create various lenses, dashboards, and uh, um, how can we uh, embed the dashboards which we which we created, which we built in Einstein analytics. How can we embed this within a Python or how can we embed this directly in our Salesforce object layout? So that's the way how we can how uh, how we can successfully pull the data from our snow flag into Einstein analytic cloud. So that's all in this video. If you have any doubts or if you have some questions, you can post your questions in comment box. You can contact us on www.bispsolutions.com. If you are looking for some customized solution for your organization, you can visit us. Till then, keep watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.